In this first video of the beginners course for Amazon Sumerian, we're going to look at how to create a new scene as well as we're going to cover the general UI for Amazon Sumerian. So let's get started. We are currently looking at the dashboard for Amazon Sumerian. This is where you will see all of your scenes, uh, past and present, and the uh, a couple templates that you can use to open up some new scenes. So uh, let's cover this real quickly. Over here on the left-hand side, we have our home drafts and trash. And so if I wanna open up a scenes that I've used before, I can go to drafts and I'll get a list. I don't have any yet, and so I won't see any. Um, as well as anything I've deleted will be in trash. Uh, but for the most part, what you'll see up here in these recent scene sections is scenes that you've worked on in the past. If you go to drafts, you will see everything you've worked on and they will be uh, logged chronologically. Uh, but if you just go to home, this will show scenes that you've worked on just somewhat recently. Below that are your options for templates. So if you want to open up a template, this is especially useful for augmented reality and also the default lighting scene. If you open up an empty scene or you just click create a new scene, that'll give you both give you an empty scene of which there is nothing in it uh, except for a camera. So we are not going to do that, actually. We are going to start off this course by using the default lighting scene. And we will look at how to what the differences between an empty scene and a default lighting scene. Uh, there's not a lot. There's just a few things in a default lighting scene. So we will we will cover that in due time. So let's create a new scene with the default lighting template. I will click default lighting and I will call it beginners course. I'll just click create. Okay. So let's look here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of my screen a little bit. All right, we are going to move from the top left and over, and we are going to cover all these different panels and uh, buttons and menus and drop downs and everything. So up here in the top left hand side is the scene drop down menu. This gives you the option to open up a new scene, open a uh, or start a new scene, open up an existing one. Um, you can save it, even though it does auto save um, increment or every. A few seconds you can save it if you want here manually you can also duplicate a scene as well as publish a scene uh, over here in the drop down the tools drop down menu this allows you to go to immediately go to your text editor your state machine or your timeline these are editing tools within Sumerian and we're not going to cover uh, really any of those today or in this video we will get to those in later videos um, except for the timeline there are separate tutorials for that one specifically this will not be covered in the course. Uh, however, there are t there are tutorials to cover that. So that is the, the top left. Moving over, uh, let's go to the other side. If you need help, you can, of course, hit the help drop down menu. You can t go to tutorials, uh, the user guide, scripting API, and uh, also joining, on, joining us on Slack. And this is your account number and account ID. And so this is going to be, uh, this is going to be reflect uh, the account that you're using. All right, so that is the top bar, except for create entity and import assets. These are very, very common menus that you're gonna use a lot in Sumerian, especially in this course. So if you click create entity, this will open up the create entity menu. The create entity menu has several primitive 2D shapes, um, a few others in that category, as well as lights and cameras. So let's quickly cover what those are. I'm gonna go ahead and click, well, let's not do that yet. Um, the 3D primitives, this has 3D shapes. So a box, a cone, a cylinder, a disc, a quad, a, a sphere, and also a torus. 2D shapes are, of course, just 2D, two-dimensional. Others category has an empty entity. An empty entity is essentially a, and we will look at this um, throughout this course, empty entity is essentially an empty container that you can nest other entities in. So that's useful for grouping and nesting entities as a group. Uh, HTML 3D, that is HTML 3D entity that allows you to post or to paste or place, I should say, an HTML entity, but in 3D space. That is different from the HTML entity, which just adds, it's an HTML overlay on top of your scene. Uh, this also allows you to add particles and a timeline. We will cover lights in a separate tutorial in this uh, course or series. Uh, however, I'll briefly describe lights. Uh, a point light will mostly reflect a light bulb, so it'll emit light in all directions. Uh, directional light will act like sunlight or moonlight. 
It'll be a light source that is essentially, in practice, uh, infinitely far away from your scene. And a spotlight acts like a spotlight or a flashlight. Uh, cameras. There are four different camera types. There's orbit, fly, fixed, and 2D. An orbit camera is a camera that will orbit around a center point in your scene, and that is the default camera. So if you look over here in default camera over here in your entities panel, uh, that is the that is the type is a orbit cam. Uh, fly cam allows you to when in play mode allows you to control it using your keyboard. And fixed cam is exactly what it sounds like. It is fixed. It does not move when you are in play mode. And a 2D cam is an orthographic camera uh, with a 2D pan rotational control. If you think about Sims or those types of games, that's what a 2D cam looks like. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, the orbit cam is the default camera both for the editing mode and for editing mode and also in your play mode. Uh, but it is the only... It, all your edit your editing camera will always operate as an orbit cam so that cannot be changed but you can change the camera types for play mode so that covers the th the create entity menu i'll close that and then i'll click on the import assets button this will open up our assets library which this is where you can find hosts as well as a few different pieces of furniture and some other important assets songs here also, the Sky Sphere pack, we're going to look at that. So that's a pack full of Sky Spheres uh, to add as a background. So these are very, very useful for a lot of other tutorials. And so make sure you uh, check this out, uh, check out this library, check out other tutorials too, and see how um, many of these assets are used. I am not going to be adding any assets at the moment, so I'll just go ahead and cancel. Let's look at the Entities panel. The Entities panel is the panel that will contain everything that is in your scene. The top level entity is uh, the beginner's course. And so this is our scene level entity. So when I have this selected, I get unique components over here in the inspector panel. So the inspector panel, though it doesn't say it, is this panel over here on the right. And this will change based on what you have selected in your Entities panel. So if I select default camera, I get different components. And one of the important ones being I have a camera component. Default lights, this is actually a empty entity. And if I uh, expand this, now I can actually select the actual lights in my scene. If I select these different directional light types, I, these lights have a, unsurprisingly, a light component. So again, the inspector panel changes based on what you have selected over here in the entities panel. So um, let's click the top level entity which is always going to be the it's going to carry the same name as your course and so this covers everything that is in your scene so if i select this i of course have the the name of my scene if i select that i can change it right here so if i change it um then the, it'll this will be reflected over here in the entities panel as well as on our dashboard i'm going to add descriptions to my scene this gives me um, different information uh, metadata about my scene I can click AWS configuration and add a Cognito identity pool here if I want to connect with other AWS services. Um, snapshots allows us to take essentially snapshots and versions that we can return to uh, down the road as we're building our scene. Environment is an important one that we'll cover shortly. This has to do with your background, your sky sphere, and a few other things. Uh, and, and scene size and scene stats, you can select those to understand, uh, get some metrics about your scene. So that is the top level entity everything else in our entities panel uh, will reflect again differently based on what is selected one thing to note is that everything in our scene every entity in our scene will always have uh, this top tab and if you select that that this is our this is kind of the the uh, description tab or the metadata tab and so i can change the name of a entity if i want so similar to how i change the name of the scene itself if i select the top tab for Anything inside of our scene, I can change the name of that as well. So if I want this to be orbit cam, I can change it right there. Uh, it's same for the lights. If I want to change the light type, I can change the name right here. However, one thing to note is that every entity in your scene will always have a transform component. Transform component is where that, that entity lives in your space. So let's unfold that real quickly for this, this directional light. Um, it'll always have a translation, which is the position of the entity in our scene. It'll always have three values for the rotation, 
So that is how it is rotated and also the scale. And so if you change any of these values, this will change either the translation or position, change the rotation or scale of that entity. So that is the transform. Every, remember, every entity in your scene will always have, trans, have a transform component. However, not everything is going to have a light component as well, and not everything is going to have a camera component or a script component. You can always add components, however, by clicking this add component, and this gives us, gives us a list of components, and we will cover these throughout the course, these different types, you know, collider, uh, geometry, a little bit. Uh, particles, eh, not all of these will be covered, but some of them. Rigid body, speech, we'll, uh, we will be using several of these throughout this course. And so that is one thing to know about the inspector panel, is that if you want to change values or properties about um, an entity or edit an entity, this is where oftentimes will, where you will go. So if I wanted to add a state machine and create a behavior for an entity, I would click add entity, go to state machine, add that state machine entity, then I would edit the values um, of the state machine behavior from that component over here in the inspector panel. As we go through you, this will make a lot more sense. Down below the entities panel is the assets panel. This contains everything we have in our scene. So it may not be visible or added to the scene yet, but it will be, this is like a library of assets and entities and different file types that have been added to our scene. So right now we have a blue sky sphere and a sky, a sky sphere blue. So uh, different types of asset types. We'll, we'll cover that shortly. Also, it has, there's a filter strip up here. So if you want to filter down to textures or behaviors, skyboxes, JSON files, speeches, scripts, sounds, materials, skeletons, meshes, gesture maps, entities, or all, you can click these buttons up here to filter down to those different file types. We will use the assets panel a lot, and I'll give you a heads up that the assets panel, if you get comfortable with it, it'll make your workflow a lot easier and a lot faster. So that is the assets panel. Uh, most of these things will be understood in due time as we start um, messing around with them. In the center, of course, is the canvas. The canvas is the where where we can see our scene in editor mode, and um, it's a very the biggest part of our, our UI and also the most interesting part. So let's cover some of the options we have up here above the canvas. Number one is we have these three different buttons. Remember how we were talking about how every entity had a transform. Well, if you, let's click this directional light. Right now I have the transform handles selected by clicking this button. If I wanna select the rotation, I can click this button as well as the scale. So I can change all these values either by changing them manually over here in the transform component uh, property values, or I can actually move them um, on my own by moving the, the handles in any direction I choose. This is the global space toggle. So this will switch an entity from its local values to the global values. And so you notice kind of how the handles change a little bit. Uh, the full shading drop-down menu, this allows you to look at your uh, entities, whether in full shading, full frame, full bus, plus wireframe or wireframe normals, flat, lit, and texture. This is not something we're gonna be covering in this course. Uh, moving on to the next, we have toggle skybox. You can turn that on and off. If I toggle off the skybox, I lose what we see in the background, which looks like a blue sky. I can also toggle on and off my grid. And so if I toggle that on and off, I will lose my grid. I like keeping the grid on because it gives you a frame of reference for what is happening in your scene. Uh, the next button will allow us to toggle on and off our post effects. Uh, the, the camera drop, drop down menu will allow you to switch to different uh, camera types that are in your scene. We don't really have much else other than this editor camera, so we're not going to mess with that at the moment. And then these other buttons will allow you to uh, will frame your entities that you have selected in your scene. I'll show you what that is real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and create entity and add a box. I have a box in the middle of my scene now. I can't see it, but if I either click this frame selection button or what I commonly do is just hit the F key. Now I need to have the box selected. My camera will then frame that box in the middle of our canvas. So it zooms in on it. So that's, that's one way you can quickly view certain entities in your scene uh, by hitting that frame selection. 
or the F button. And let's see what else do we have here. If we want to enter play mode, we just press the play button. So entering play mode allows you to preview what is happening in your scene when it would be published. And there's not much happening in my scene now because all I have is a box. And there's no behaviors, there's no interactivity, nothing really happens, there's just a box. So I wanna stop play mode. Oh, before I stop, just do notice that there are some slight differences in camera controls between um, editor mode and also play mode. Very, very slight, not much, uh, but they are, there are some differences. And so one thing to note between the camera controls for play mode and editor mode is I cannot select anything now when I'm in play mode. So where I was able to select this bo box and see the handles, I can't do that in edit play mode because this would be the live version of my scene. If I stop it, however, now I see those handles and now I can move it around because now I'm in editor mode, which means I can edit. Uh, also, if you want to view your scene in VR, you can you can test that out by clicking the enter VR button. And you do not necessarily need to be in play mode to make this work, but you do have to have a VR compatible uh, web browser as well as a VR headset that's um, compatible that is actually set up on your computer you're using. Um, one thing I'll note about camera controls, let me move this box back. I'm hitting these undo buttons up here, undo, redo, and also duplicate. I didn't mention these, but if I want to duplicate that box, I can click the duplicate button. Now I have box two and now I have two boxes in my scene. Uh, so let's talk about the camera controls real quickly. Camera controls, um, I'm using a mouse, and so it'll be slightly different between a mouse and a trackpad. Uh, we do have documentation on that, and you can also adjust it if you'd like. Uh, so an orbit cam, remember we're in edit mode, so we're using an orbit cam. I'm orbiting around, right now I'm, I'm selected on this box too, I'll zoom out. And I'm using my right mouse button. And notice that I'm orbiting around this box too because I just, I just selected it and then frame selected it, or framed it in the middle of my scene. So it's really dead center in my canvas, and as I move around, it's always kind of focused, that's the center point of my camera. If I want to, uh, if I want to pan up, up or down, left or right, I can hold the shift button and my left mouse button, and I can pan all around. Now notice that the box is not in the center of my scene. I have now offset that, and so the center my center point is you know, roughly right there. But if I want to refocus on that box, I can select it and hit the F key and then zoom out and refocus on that box. The play mode, let's enter play mode and see what the camera controls are like there. I, I orbit in the same way using my right mouse button. And then I pan in the same way by holding shift. But it does, it does drift a little bit. That's one of the main things, the main differences between uh, editing in play mode camera controls that you can drift a bit so notice that I can spin like this that won't happen in um, in editor mode all right so that covers the basics of uh, the UI for Sumerian and the dashboard and how to create a new scene in the next video we're going to look a little bit more at how to add entities and mess with those transform components that we were discussing so uh, join us in the next video thanks mm -hmm.